Welcome to another video. It's always amazing to me how animation evolves with times. And one of the biggest developments as of the last 20 years or more, I wanna say, is definitely been the mobile uh, revolution that we've been going through, where everything is made on a mobile device. Now, unfortunately for us animators, we haven't really had a lot of options when it comes to mobile animation. And in this video, I'm gonna cover what Cascador is trying with their Cascador mobile version of the software, which I think that is incredibly exciting. In this video, we're gonna look at some of the highlight features, some of the things that I like, and some of the things that can be improved on in this version of Cascador mobile. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so. Um, I actually have tried it for a little bit just to kind of like get acquainted with it. And here I have Cascador Pro in the screen. Now, what you will see is that um, you will have two versions. You have a free version of Cascador and a pro version. So right off the bat, you can actually use it um, as much as you like with a free version. Now, the free version has some limitations to the pro version. And the pro version comes at uh, about $7.99 a month. If you're really feeling it, you can always get it. Now, let me dive in into how this works. I'm gonna be looking down here because this is where my iPad. Now, it's a very simple layout, and normally you start by pressing plus, which is creating a new scene. Here, you have to choose a model, and this is one of the things that I like, but also a limitation that you'll find on the mobile version because you can only work within these models. But I will tell you a little bit of how I rationalize this in order for you to get the most of your animation. Now, I'm going to actually add here, like, you know, YT, YT scene, uh, just for the demo, demo. Okay, so now that you have your name, I need to select a character that I'm gonna select here. And you can see here, you have a certain limitations to the characters that you select. For us, that we are gameplay animators, obviously I'm gonna choose the usual Unreal mannequin because that is what we use the most and everybody will be familiar with that. Now, after giving it a name and a character is very simple, you kinda create your new scene, you let it load for a little bit and then you have your character in your scene. So, very simple. And the best thing is that with my fingers, I can actually just press on the screen and rotate the scene as I wish. But I'm gonna use my pencil because I found that this experience is much more similar to what uh, an animator using Wacom would be used to. You would know that it's very good on your wrist. It feels very natural. It feels like you're picking up the controllers almost like manually and it feels very natural. And this is exactly the same uh, experience that you get with this software here. Now, this is me just rotating with my pencil, and then I'm gonna take you through some of the options that you have, uh, which I think covers quite a lot of what we do in animation all the time. Now, one of the first things that I immediately I was asking is if I select the controller, so I'm just gonna select the hips here, what do I have to do in order to move it? And as you can see there for just a second, you can just like, I'm just moving my pencil around and you can see that I'm moving my character already, which is great. And you can move it as much or as little as possible. And being Cascador, you have auto physics, which immediately allows you to basically have more animation for free, which is in this case for mobile actually comes in super clutch. Now, another thing that I ask myself is what about the usual gizmo that we used to in Maya when we can rotate or translate, especially for us mouse users. You have the same here when you actually kind of click on this plus button or rotation, you have the, exactly the same thing. And as that, you can then be, be more precise and move on a specific axis, which LC makes it much more like what we used to in 3D. Same thing with rotation. You can actually then now start looking at specific axes to actually rotate. And so, I'm gonna select the hand just so we can see it in action. And you can see here, I'm rotating in different axes as I'm moving that controller, which is really, really cool. Now I'm gonna like undo all this. You have an undo button right at the top and I'm just like basically clicking it until I get back to my default pose. And the timeline I like a lot, it starts from right in the middle of the screen. You don't have to actually move around your cursor to kind of like go see more or less of the timeline. And you can basically just grab it and move it. And this is what I'm doing here. Just moving the timeline and select it. And then right here on the top, uh, you see the number of the frames as you are going through them, which is great. Now, the auto 
keys your poses as you're going through it. I'm just going to select frame 10 to keep it round. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of like move my character as best as I possibly can. So we can have something here on frame 10. I'm just going to like butcher it and make it absolutely horrible as we move through this. I'm going to like select this and I'm going to select a few other things that I think will actually make more sense in just a second. Now, this is frame one, as you can see here, it goes from this frame to this frame. And then I'm gonna just select another frame, frame 20, just so we can basically have something else to play with. So I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I'm going to move it over here. So we can have something to kind of like the, like it's gonna slide and stuff, but you know, hopefully you get to see that there is some movement there that you can play with. So we have like this movement, which is horrible, but hopefully it gives you the idea of what I'm looking for. Now, there is certain things that as I was playing uh, with it, the more I was kind of like trying to push things a bit further. And one of the things that I've done, and you might have seen it as I was playing with it, is that selecting certain controllers might become a little bit difficult. And plus, if you actually want to focus on a specific part of the character, it becomes even more difficult because you are having to zoom in and zoom out. And this is actually okay because the motions that I'm doing is basically I'm moving the character with his hand, the right hand with a pencil. And then I'm basically twisting and rotating my, my uh, viewport with this hand, the left hand. So if I actually want to move it around, I move it with one finger. If I want to zoom in and zoom out, I just do the pinching motion that we all know from the iPad. And and it's very natural, but I do want to have that feeling of zooming into a controller and being able to stay within, within that controller and be able to rotate. And you can also get that by basically clicking this button here and you can see that the camera displays directly to that controller. And when you rotate, you rotate to that controller and you stay put. Same thing here, if I click it again, I move my camera again. And because it's on my left hand, as I'm moving my character to my right hand, it's actually super easy for me to kind of like just continuously move it and then go to this one and then move it again and then zoom in and then do the same thing. And it becomes a thing, a force of habit, if you will, as you are animating and going through all these controllers. But it's actually quite nice to be able to just be able to constantly readjust your camera automatically, which helps a ton. But they give you extra controls for the camera. So just as we are in the camera, if you click on